What's up guys, Sarah Winstead here, bikini athlete and coach for Pro Physique. And I am back with another video today. We are in the kitchen. So today we are talking all about nutrition. I wanted to go over with you guys some nutrition basics that you might already be familiar with, but you can always take some solid nuggets away. And this question definitely comes from my Instagram and they were asking me a lot of questions about just like basic nutritional habits, how to build your plate, and then diving deeper into things like how to get started tracking and things like nutrient timing. We can kind of do this in levels in different tiers is how I actually coach my clients as well, especially if they're brand new to tracking, brand new to improving their lifestyle, making some sustainable changes over time. Nutrition all starts in the kitchen. So I've got some different options laid out here. We're gonna first go over and just kind of just go through what I have in my fridge right now as far as like food sources, what is a protein source, what are a fat source examples, what are carb source examples. Also explaining things like crossover foods because there are definitely things out there, like for example, nut butter, that is a crossover food. It does have majority of the calories coming from fats, but also it has protein as a source of nutrients in it as well. And so we'll be going over different topics today in this video, like, comment, subscribe, all the things, but let's go ahead and dive in and dive in. Starting off, protein. In my opinion, protein is the most essential macronutrient. Without it, we don't have amino acids, we don't have muscles, we don't have bones, we just don't live. So, <laughs> uh, oh, hello, special guest. <laughs> protein is the first macronutrient that I work a lot with my clients on. Here are some great examples. Meats, eggs, yogurt. Um, these are just a few of the big examples that I have. Also, protein powder is a great example of a protein source, obviously, as well. But protein, we always start building our plate around a protein source of some kind at every single meal and snack. Don't forget the snacks. So here are some good protein examples. Next up, fats. So these are very calorie dense. You'll notice I don't have a lot of these because they are so calorie dense. Fats are nine calories per gram, as opposed to proteins and carbs that are four calories per gram. So a little bit goes a long way, especially with things like your oils. Now, I'm Italian, so I love me some extra virgin olive oil. And I do actually like also this coconut oil. I love these packets from Trader Joe's. I don't know if they still have them. I bought them a long time ago. But... You can see it's a serving and it's 14 grams of fat, zero carbs, zero protein. So it's straight as a fat source is actually very, very helpful because if you just want to use it as a topper on things like your meats, vegetables, potatoes, rices, things like that, it can make it very, very tasty. And so I don't typically cook with oils. I typically just use a spray oil or spray butter on my pans, quick spray because it is oil, so it will add up over time. But then things like nut butters, like I mentioned earlier, they are what I consider a crossover food because you see it says here on the label, seven grams of protein per serving. They try to advertise that it's, oh, it's, it's a protein source, right? Actually not. The way to tell this, look at the back of it. You see these percentages on here? You can actually tell of this serving, um, the highest percentage on here of the daily, oh, there it goes, of the daily values comes from fats. That means, and again, if we do the math, 16 times nine is greater than seven times four. So that is why I consider this a crossover food because it does mainly contain fats, um, but it does have trace proteins and a little bit of carbs in it as well. Same thing goes with things like cheeses. They are mainly fat sources, but they also contain protein as well. This is helpful when you are logging and tracking your foods to be aware of these things like crossover foods. Another great example, um, the beef that I showed you earlier is a 93.7 beef, and then also things like salmon, proteins, and fats. Are you being impatient with mommy because I'm filming a video instead of playing with you? Yes. <laughs> oh, you know.
Getting into carbohydrate sources. I wanted to take a pit stop to talk about some sauces here as well. I prefer personally using more carbohydrate-based sauces that you can see here. Honey mustard, teriyaki sauce, the sugar-free sweet chili sauce versus um, vinaigrettes or anything like that. Those are gonna be more, or mayo-based sauces. Those are gonna be higher a little bit in fats. I prefer saving my fats for what you just saw, things like cheeses, avocados, um, meats, things like that, um, but, I, I honestly, because you typically have more fats and carbs in your day, I like spending those fats on something better, in my opinion, than like a vinaigrette or something like that. But I just want to mention those here. Carbohydrates. We have the fun ones, obviously, of cinnamon toast crunch, whole grain brown rice, my chocolate rice cakes. I forgot to put in here my English muffins, which I have as well. And then we get into Vegetables and fruits. Yes, guys, vegetables and fruits are carbohydrates. So when we say we're not eating carbohydrates, we aren't eating these, <laughs> which in my opinion is very sad because I love fruits and vegetables. If you'll notice, lots of variety of color here. The more color you have in your day, the better. The more micronutrients you have, the better. So try to get in at least four to five servings, I prefer five, of fruits and vegetables every single day. Now, this doesn't mean you have to have five different ones every single day. This just means we need, you know, two servings of peas, two servings of strawberries, and then one serving of blueberries and boom, you're done. But then I like getting more than that just personally because I, I love my vegetables, I love my fruits, especially in something like a contest prep or a dieting phase, it can be helpful to provide a little bit more volume because they contain things like fiber, which take a little bit longer for our bodies to digest. And so I love my fruits and vegetables. So how do you build your plate? I'll do it things from left to right here. Always, like I mentioned before, start with protein, centerpiece of every single meal. My goal for a lot of my clients is to have around 25 to 35 grams or a little bit more of protein for each meal. Snacks can be slightly smaller, but that's going to ensure that we hit our leucine goal to spike most protein synthesis, but also have great satiety and not to have to eat a mountain full of chicken at the end of the day because no one wants to do that. Start with protein, then add your produce. Right now I'm making a stir fry. This is an example of how I might make it on one day. Adding some broccoli slaw and sugar snap peas. And then I usually use whole grain brown rice and some kikoman teriyaki sauce on top. And then I either add pineapple on the side as like a little dessert for after my stir fry or I'll actually add it to my stir fry. Easy thing. And so that is your produce and your carb sources. Once the protein's there, carbs are there, Moving on, you always add fats as a sprinkle, as I say, on top at the end of your meal. This is where things like my cheese, and then occasionally if I have extra fats, I might add in some coconut oil as a full packet or as a half packet. I always wait till the end again to add this in because if you cook with it, like things like oils, you don't know how much is going into your food or being cooked off into the air. So we wanna get the full benefit of those as a fat source. They're a great fat source. So always keep them and use them as a topper. But this is an example of a well-built plate. Identified every meal and snack. What is your protein source? What is your carb source? produce as well. And then what is your fat source? Obviously knowing that some things that we do eat, like the cheese, like I mentioned earlier, and the meats also have crossover items. Like the beef has a little bit of fat and the provolone cheese has a little bit of protein in it. And so this is how we build our plate. I can definitely give you guys other examples later on in future videos, but this is a very simple example of how to build a satisfying and delicious meal. All right. So I hope that that little deep dive into food groups, how to identify protein sources, fat sources, carb sources, and a little bit of just like introductory information on kind of how to build your plate. Um, hopefully that was helpful to anybody that's just getting started in maybe a lifestyle transformation, habit improvement, just didn't know where to start as far as just like, I want to make some improvements to my life. I want to live a healthier or sustainable lifestyle than what I'm doing now. I want to make small changes. How do I go about doing that? And so I would just say, you're going to start anywhere, start with protein. Protein, the number one thing that clients come to me under consuming, females mostly, and even some males as well, protein. 
So we need it. <laughs> like I said, muscles, bone density, our protein needs, I've said this before, actually increase as we age. So to avoid things like osteopenia, osteoporosis, make sure you are getting significant amounts of protein. And I'm honestly not a fan of the RDA of protein. A little bit too low for me. And so, you know, if you have a maybe a goal body weight, if you are maybe a little bit more overweight, I would say start there. But also if you're only eating, you know, 30 grams, 40 grams, 50 grams of protein a day, don't immediately jump to like 150 grams of protein. That's going to be very hard on your digestion. Make increases like by, you know, three to four ounces in like a meal or something like that. If you don't have any protein like on your salad, add some protein there and be like, boom, do that for a week and then add something else. I think where people go wrong and just kind of overwhelm themselves with their New Year's resolutions is they try to change like 15,000 things, they get discouraged, they get overwhelmed, and they're just like, well, screw it. And so small changes over time. That's one of my keys, especially if you're getting started in any sort of nutritional improvements to your lifestyle. Um, protein, number one. And then number two, if you want to get more granular, I would say start logging and tracking your food. There's a ton of apps out there. I've used my fitness pal a lot of days. I have a streak going, a lot of days. Um, there's other apps out there as well, like Chronometer, uh, Lose It, um, My Macros Plus. There's a ton of apps out there that can help you in not only just tracking and logging your foods, but learning about foods. That's the primary thing. Turn it around. Look at that label. Like I mentioned too with those crossover foods, looking at and seeing, you know, where is the highest percentage coming from? Is it coming from fats? Is it coming from proteins? Is it coming from carbs? You know, it's like my, my cinnamon toast crunch, highest percentage. It has trace fats. It has trace proteins. The highest percentage is carbs. And so that's what I, I like encouraging my clients to learn about for nutritional purposes, for life purposes, beyond what maybe phase that you're in or whatever you might be hiring me for as well. Learning about foods, learning how to build your plate and also snacks as well. We kind of miss the protein source sometimes at snacks. We may eat an apple or some, you know, uh, maybe some uh, carrot sticks or something like that dipped in like some ranch or something like that. And like, hey, I'm being healthy, right? Yes, you are. You're being healthy. You're making improvements, but you might be hungry an hour later because you missed the protein source. And so for that, I maybe would add like half a protein bar, um, maybe a shake of some kind pre-made or otherwise, or maybe some deli meat roll-ups, uh, cottage cheese, uh, you know, stuff like that can be very useful in those kinds of situations. So when you're building your plate, start with protein, add your produce and your carbohydrates, your starchy carbs, and then sprinkle your fats on top of that, knowing that, yes, we have some crossovers there. But logging and tracking your foods can be very beneficial. Yes, it is going to be time consuming. Yes, it is going to be overwhelming, especially when you get started. But it's a great way to see where you are and what your habits are, and a great way to eventually also learn about portion sizes. Um, I sometimes challenge my clients to, if they are transitioning off of tracking or want to test themselves for like meals out, for example, put your, the paper plate over your, the numbers on your food scale, zero it out, and then put on there what you think is the proper serving of that food, be it vegetables, be it meats, and then move the paper plate and then being like, how close was I? That'll help you eyeball things. And so it's, it's, Tracking for me is a fantastic tool. Can it be a, a prison of sorts for some people? Yes, of course it can. It's all in how you look at it and how you use it. And so again, getting started, the biggest thing if you're getting started tracking, don't change your habits. When we start doing something new or start putting numbers in, we kind of get scared of being like, do I put the chocolate brownie in that I had yesterday? Do I put the buttery croissant in that I had for breakfast? Yes, you do. Because that's what you've been doing the past three, four, five, six, seven months. That is your maintenance calorie range. I don't particularly like calculators because it spits out a number at you and has no idea what you've been doing over the past six to eight to 12 months. And so that's why I like tracking initially to see where you are. And it's going to be this. It's going to be this because most people's days that don't have a plan or don't have the consistency in their lives, which is more than likely why they're looking to make a change, it's going to be this every single day. Some days are higher, some days are lower, some days are higher. You know, weekends typically for people, more social, they could be higher. Um, things like that. When you start initially tracking, it gives you an idea of where you are, where your habits are, what your maintenance calorie range is, because it's a range every single day. And from there, you can start making improvements. Like I mentioned, 
Start with protein. That'd be the first thing. Number two, start with fruits, more fruits and vegetables, more color, more variety, making sure to identify at least one piece of produce at every single meal or snack that you're having, or at least getting in your five, maybe doubling it up. Like I mentioned with a big ass salad, I do a big ass stir fry for lunch right now. And then of course that can make like maybe your breakfast, um, which for me is still my pre-workout snack of like my strawberries and stuff like that. But that can be a little bit lighter if you want to, if you're busy, it's people are like, oh, I don't want to do vegetables in the morning. Like, yeah, make a veggie omelet if you want to, but there's different ways you can structure things. So protein, then look at your variety of fruits and vegetables, fiber, um, micronutrients, vitamins and minerals. We need those kinds of things in our day that we can't get from other foods. And so that's where I would start those two big ones. And then number three, you can look at portions. You can eyeball things, like I mentioned before, as far as like learning about what a serving of rice actually is and knowing that when you got to dinner, it's more than likely gonna be a lot more. Like things like, I, I love my Italian food, but man, there's so many servings of pasta that they give you because when you actually measure out a serving of pasta or a serving of cereal, you're going to look at it and being like, that's sad. Super sad. Because <laughs> it's not that much, people. And so, but then you can just learn. And then you can start to modify your portions and just like play, play a little bit of macro Tetris, but not in a way that you're trying to fit in donuts and pop tarts and pizza and wine all these things into one day but still hit your fiber goals and still hit your protein goals you know i would say you know we embrace flexible dieting at pro physique i've embraced flexible dieting my entire time that i've been tracking and it's very successful for me you guys see my food i have my fruits my vegetables my proteins my fats but then i also have my fun foods which i consider my cinnamon toast crunch <sighs> so fun. I consider like when I have my bread for my sandwiches or like a fun like baguette or a Cuban bread um, or something like that, a fun food. Or if I want like a, you know, like a, a brownie or a cookie, I'm a chocoholic. And so if I want that. I know I can work those kinds of things in to satisfy some cravings when they come up and when I want them. And so, but this all comes when we make those improvements. It's not going to happen day one guarantee you. You're not going to be great at tracking. You're not going to be great at logging your food day one. It's going to be hell. It takes about three to four weeks, I would say, of tracking, of logging. And then once you get a handle on it, like I said, you can just meal prep. You can go into different other other avenues to focus on knowing that you've got your meals on, on point and, and you've got your plate on point. You can go into meal prep. You can go into more things like nutrient timing, which I mentioned at the beginning of this video. Things like structuring your carbohydrates around your training. It gives you more fuel, more energy, more recovery. You guys see my pre-workout snack on my rice cakes and strawberries and my cinnamon toast crunch cereal at the end. That didn't change as far as like focusing my carbs, whether or not I'm building my muscle or when I'm dieting because we still need the fuel. We still need the recovery. For years, I was fasted training. Years, even in swimming, I was fasted. Um, and looking back on it, yes, hindsight is twenty twenty. but I, I kind of wish I had something in my stomach before I trained, you know, even just like a banana or like a yogurt with some banana in it would be very useful. Like if you're not doing fed training in the morning, um, you know, I would encourage you to try something small. Like I said, half a banana. You know, don't throw a whole meal at yourself just because you're like, you read somewhere, I need to be fed. No, if you haven't been doing it for years, small changes over time. Um, that's why I love nutrient timing as far as like seeing what's optimal for us and what we digest well. Like it took me a while to find my chocolate rice cakes and strawberries pre-training that actually sat well with me. I did try cereal first, but the milk was just like not the best in my stomach. Um, I, I've done liquid carbs as well, like um, dextrose and cyclic dextrin. I've done that before training and during training. I've done candy. I've done gummy bears. I actually like um, Rice Krispie treats sit well with me too and so it's about finding those things that work for you um for fuel and things like that and then what works well for you afterwards that's why I like spreading out my fats later on in the day that's like my nut butters my cheeses my avocado my fattier meats um things like that that'll take up my fats later on in the day that way I don't get cramps um if I have a fatty meal before I go train because the blood pools in our stomach and it takes away from the blood flow to our muscles if we have a high fat meal and then go train and so that's why I encourage you guys, take this slow, figure out what works best for you. There are principles out there, like I've mentioned, like protein, like healthy fats, healthy, um, you know, really good fruits and vegetables and things like that, incorporating those kind of things. But the way that you do it and how you do it and when you do it, that's more so, at least for me, like how, how you get into the art of coaching and figuring out what works for each and every client. Because I have clients that, you know, are in shift work and we have to manipulate their food because sometimes they just can't 
like eat food before, you know, or after workouts or anything like that. You know, we have to structure things according to their lifestyle. People have kids. Sometimes you just can't help yourself. You've got to eat what they're giving you and things like that too. So it's, it all depends. It all depends upon what works for you. And like I said, I hope you guys got enough, at least like nuggets out of this video. Maybe if you are new to a, you know, implementing and improving your lifestyle in a nutritional way, um, or if you have been logging or tracking or anything like that, maybe you got some deeper insights into here. Let me know what questions you guys have. I can do more of these like educational style videos um, in the future about different topics. I'm hopefully doing a, a contest prep Q&A here in the next few weeks. So send me questions for that as well. I'll put a post up on my Instagram too before I do that. Um, but yes, I love answering your guys' questions, especially about these kinds of things that, you know, nutrition in and of itself can be very overwhelming for a lot of people. There's a lot of information out there and I respect it. I just encourage you to find what works for you you know, um, and, and stick with it. Don't just do it for a week and be like, oh, it didn't work for me. You know, do it for a month, do it for six months and everything like that. And then tweak it, get better at it. Like I said, small changes over time. That's why I encourage my, my clients to do. That's what I did myself to be successful, not just now, but to create a sustainable lifestyle for yourself in the long term. So that's going to do it for me today, guys. I appreciate you guys tuning in and watching. Like, comment, subscribe, all the things. You guys know what to do, and I will catch you guys in the next video.